welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 187. This episode is the return of the incredible Tara Platt. It's been over a year since our previous chat, and a lot has happened, not the least of which is the release of her new novel, Prep School for Serial Killers, which I can confirm is so good. In this episode, we talk about her recent trip to Europe, becoming an official lady of Scotland, the crazy process of making her previous book, Zartana, her new novel, Prep School for Serial Killers, how she wrote it without an outline. Without an outline, guys. What that process was like, what she learned along the way, and so much more. If you'd like to pick up any of Tara's books, which I highly recommend that you do, there are links in the description of this episode for you to do so. And if you happen to live near the Burbank, California area, Tara will be doing an in-person signing at Dark Delicacies on December 3rd at 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Check it out. That gives you plenty of time to read the book. It's going to be great. But before you do all of that... Please enjoy this episode of the interesting podcast, number 187, The Return of Lady Tara Platt. Theme song time. I was looking up today. The last time we talked was June of last year. Really? It's, yeah, it's been it's been the it's been a year and a few months. It's been a crazy year. Granted, it has been a crazy year. We're in the midst of a pandemic, so yeah. that's a thing. You yeah. know, so the, yeah. the time stretches. I feel like it does. It does. Yeah. It definitely. Yeah. Yeah. There's no sense of time anymore. What, there's there's not. a TV show. I think Yuri watches. It's called The Patriot or Patriot or Patriotic or something. It sounds about right. Like there's an a assassin. P in there. Yeah, there's a there's oh, an assassin, sweet. and of course Yuri loves that sort of yeah. thing. And um and there's a character that he's always talking about that sings like he plays guitar and sings music, Amazing. and he talks about time being a flat circle. And so whenever we're like, I don't, it hasn't been a year. And it, sure, time's a flat circle. Yeah. <laughs> so time is a flat circle. I don't it know, is. man. I don't it know. is. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. It's it's something else. I something. I did see that you just went to Scotland. We went to Scotland, England, and Ireland. Oh, talk to me about it. How was it? What yeah. favorite things? Um, Come well, on. Yuri and I travel a lot. Um, I remember. That is something that like, we even have our web series about. That. Uh-huh. We, we just amazing. love to travel. We, we love going places. We love experiencing Ditto. the adventure of travel. Um, we love mm-hmm. the cuisine. We love hanging out in other cities and architecture and going to museums. And like we, we enjoy traveling. Um, yeah. But I also think that my hope as a parent is that I can instill those values in our child yeah, organically. So like, I want him to recognize that the experience we have is not a universal experience. It happens Mm -hmm. to be our experience, but this is what the world is like. And this is what people look like and behave and sound like in other places. And this is, and that makes them perfect because that's who they are. And like, I, I'm right. trying to Open sort of help him. Yeah. And help him become like a citizen of the world so that he recognizes that, that we are all different, but yet we are all the same. I love it. And so travel was always something that we talked about Yuri and I, that we talked about, you know, in our discussions of parenting, we were like, yeah. well, we've got it. We've got to travel with him. Yeah. And so we've been traveling with him since he was like six months old. And then of course we took a giant break yeah. because time is a flat circle <laughs> yeah. and also <laughs> because the pandemic. Right. Um, and so I'm not saying the pandemic is over, but I am saying mm-hmm. that um, we're trying to find ways that we can get back into our value system totally in a safe organic way so for the summer we chose um to do scotland england and ireland oh beautiful um and it was great because i mean i love all those countries yeah (laughs) we we go there a lot (laughs) um (laughs) rightfully uh, so but right and sagan had been to ireland before but he hadn't had he been to he may have been to London when he was a baby, just because sometimes it's easier from where we are to fly into Heathrow. Uh-huh. And then we're like, well, we're already here. We should spend a day or two. Like, so right. usually for me, 
because we do so much traveling, when I book the tickets, I always am trying to find the best deal to get to. And I put in quotes, Europe, like yeah, yeah. where is the cheapest place to fly into? And then based the on that, thing. what are we, where can then we go with the easiest, least amount of hassle to do the thing that we're trying to do this time? Totally. So like, actually for Christmas, we're going to go over again. Oh, but we're amazing. doing a different trip. <laughs> good. So like, but, but the reason that we end up in the cities that we ended up in is because I was like, oh, that's a good trip. We'll, we'll fly that one. And then once we're there, oh, that's an easy trip here and we'll do this. And like, so that's me. It's like trying to figure out also traveling with a child. I don't like layovers. Ooh. I don't like, I, I want direct you. flights. And like, yes. I know that some people are like, well, you got to go for the cheapest thing. And I'm like, yes, but <laughs> there is value as the parent knowing that I will land there in 11 hours and it's not going to be a 24 hour day. Yes, <laughs> like, totally. So, um, so yeah, so, so yes, but we did Scotland, England and Ireland and it was gorgeous. And we, what we did was we flew into London we hung out there for a few days. We caught up with a bunch of friends because we have friends that cool. live there. Then we rented a car and we drove to the south and we stopped in Bath and we actually went to Stonehenge oh, cool. and we did some stuff like that because I'm always trying to throw in a little sprinkling of like educational. Of course. Fun, Learn a little. You know, Neolithic, whatever. It's <laughs> Why fun. not? Um, exactly. And so we did that. And then we basically drove all the way up through like up Scotland but we oh, stopped sweet. and visited friends as we went along the way because we have friends in various places yeah and so we drove all the way up to Scotland because Sagan really needed to see the Loch Ness Monster oh of course so um, I understand so we so we did that and it was gorgeous I mean like yeah it's it was unbelievable and I forget the name of it I I because I'm so type A and yeah. because my memory is so <laughs> crappy I actually build the books when we're done with our trip and if I realized That's we were awesome. going to talk about it not not that I you need to see the book but I would yeah. only be able to flip through and be like what's the name of that park because like I write things down in my book so that later I can be like oh that's the that's lock so smart Speed Inverness park like I don't know yeah. but like I can't remember <laughs> what it was called but it was literally like driving through an elven world like it was just really? so beautiful and there were hundreds of waterfalls because oh you're sort of like going through I think it was like a glacier fall yeah so you're like going through these like giant jaggedy mountainous things that are now covered in green and beauty and rocks and like it's just what? it's just it's glorious Magical. and so so we did that and then we flew from Edinburgh over to, to Ireland and we basically got in a car again because because we're still a little skittish with same, same things. And we were super fully, uh, well, vac vaccinated, but we were also super fully masked. Yeah. yeah. Um, we were trying, we were trying to make it as much of like a road trip as possible. Cause that way we were kind of on our own terms oh, and we were in our own vehicle. Like we didn't, yeah. we didn't do like tours in that sense. Sure. The only thing we did was we took a train. It's called the Hogwarts train. Oh, sweet. Um, but it's the, but it's, I forget the name of it too. I should, I, I, I really suck at like <laughs> what things actually are, but Come um, on, Tara. it's not called the Hogwarts train, but you can look it up and you can find it. Um, it but we did now. that. Uh, yes. Over the, over the aqueduct in Scotland. And so it's just, it was beautiful. So that was one thing we did, but we stayed masked up on the train, but it was like a two hour totally. train ride sure. rather than us like getting on buses. And yeah. I would much rather us just get our own car and drive to the location and like mm -hmm. get a little guidebook and wander around and talk about it than taking totally. official tours. The only official tour I think we took was when we were in Bath, which is a glorious, beautiful city. Yeah. Um, we did a walking tour of the city because we were Ooh. walking, but also you do get information when you're with a tour guide that you don't necessarily glean on your own. Totally. Or that you don't you don't know is the important thing when you're reading those, you know, documents and stuff. Yeah. But um, but it was beautiful and lovely and and it was just nice to get back into traveling. Again. Yeah. Because, you know, we're a little we're a little gun shy about everything right now. So. I feel you. I, I'm the yeah. same way. And there, there is, I think there's a specific type of person that is a traveler. There's that like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's a part of your, your spirit. That's like, yeah. I have to go see things. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I, yeah. I've never been to Scotland. I, I'm thinking, so I'm going to London in April mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. two weeks. Well, if you and can I'm, manage it, go to Scotland. That's what too. I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. It's like, maybe I could just like do, just head up there, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like I have I to mean, now. It, it all depends what you're interested in because Scotland yeah. is such a varied country too. Sure. Um, you know, they've got the, the, the highlands and then there's, right. you know, like there's, there's various parts of that, even okay. though it's all on one Island, you know, you've yeah. got England and Scotland sort of all squished together. Right. Um, But like, even if you just go to Edinburgh as like yeah. a main big city, 
sure. it feels different than the main big cities in England to me. Cool. So like okay. you're you're gonna still get a different vibe. Yeah. But um, but it's just they're just lovely countries. They're just really, really lovely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I could live over there, I would probably live over there. Right. I, I, yeah. I I I gotta do it. I did all of Ireland like six years ago, like the full landed yes. in Dublin, went all the way yes. to Port McGee, Galway, yeah. Donegal, Belfast. Uh-huh. Like my heart is still there. There's a piece oh, of yeah. me in Tallymore oh, yes. Forest that just, yes. mm-hmm. oh, I miss yep. it so much. Yeah, we go back as often as we possibly can. So I and understand. So. Yeah. <laughs> You're I, preaching to the choir. Yeah. I get you, I get you, I get you. I didn't um, realize yeah. I was preaching to an official lady. You're yes. actually Lady yes. Tara. Yes. So um, wow. there's a, a nature conservancy in Scotland that is dedicated to, and this is what we found out, which is so cool. Yeah. After the war, post-World War II, they had felled so many trees to build fires and do things like that to help build equipment and to do um, production in factories and things like that, mm-hmm. that they, they had lost most of the tree cover in the entirety of the island of, oh. of Scotland and, Ireland, and, and England. I don't know if it affected Ireland as much, but but she was talking from Scotland because we were at the Conservancy right. in Scotland. Um, but in order to deal with that, the government was like, hey, any farmer that's willing to turn your land into tree flip farms, like plots of trees, because we yeah. still need trees because we burn fuel and <laughs> mm-hmm. trees are important, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Anyone that does that with your, your land is given like, I forget how much money they gave them, but the, like the government was paying people to make tree farms basically. Cool. So a bunch of people were like, yeah, let's do it. And they did a little research and they found that the fastest, quickest growing trees were not indigenous to that island. So they imported oh. a whole bunch of trees. I don't remember which kind. You sure. have to look trees. it up. I don't That's know what it is. Trees. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they imported all these trees from America and from other places that were not native to the land. And then they started growing all these massive farms which was great for trees, but not great for the land and the wildlife and things like that. Ah, sure. And so the the Nature Conservancy has now, uh, the, the place that we donated to is called Highland Titles. Cool. And so we each bought a little plot of land. Oh, like, you know, well, a, well, A square well. foot by a square foot or whatever it is. Still counts. Being, um, <laughs> but uh, but so so actually we took a picture of us standing on our little, la- like we we're all squished together. And we're like, look, this is us on I our land. <laughs> um, but so, but by buying land in Scotland, there's some sort of like old, and it's not like enforceable, but like if you own land, if you're a landowner, you are a lord or a lady or a. I love it. You know, so we are all lords and ladies now. In Look at that! I, I right. did it not means, realize it means, it means less than nothing, but it's okay. Because, yeah. but, but I was happy to support them, and it's a beautiful place. Like even just driving around the Highland Titles. Oh yeah. Like now the nature reserve, and it's gorgeous. It's sure. So beautiful. So yes. So we we are lords and ladies. That's awesome. And yeah. how often? I imagine. The amount of people who go through that, but who get to actually see their one foot by one foot, I feel like it's not, it's a small number. That's true because we intentionally scheduled mm-hmm. a whole half day Smart. in the the location where our plot is because they have various areas. And yeah. so I, I looked up and I researched where our little bit was yeah. and I reached out to the company before our trip and he said, is it possible to see it? She goes, oh, we actually give tours. And so we scheduled a tour. Oh. <laughs> so like we went there and we got the tour of the whole land, but then they took us to our actual plot and we got to stand on it, Look at which that. is just that's so cool. Yeah, it was so cool. But what I will say, which is interesting, is there are other places that are really just selling titles because of, course. Because of this loophole. Mm-hmm. But there's not proof that they haven't sold you the same title that they sold me kind of a thing. Oh. Whereas the 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 Highland titles is very much like, this is your plot of land. We can find it for you on GPS. No one else has that plot of land. Like it's it's sure it's it's it, it's they're official. more above board it's official yeah and it can only ever be it will be inherit inheritable to my heirs they will still own that plot of land That's but so it's cool. not anything that you can do because it's a one foot by one foot inside of a, a nature conservancy park sure. so it's not okay. like anything's going to ever happen to that land right. but i also love the idea that i've invested in the future yes. of this beautiful place and totally. so they're actually reforesting so they're taking down currently where our little plot of land is Mm-hmm. They're actually actively letting those trees die because they're the in invading trees. Sure. They're letting those trees die. <laughs> so it's actually kind of like like really cool, dark and gloomy for us. Like yeah. I took some pictures there like for promotion <laughs> for my book. So I was like, this is awesome. But um, uh, they're intentionally letting it die so that then they can basically 
deforest it so that they can reforest it. Okay. Okay. That's pretty it's cool. cool. It's cool. And I like, we like doing things like that. Like I would much rather invest in the world and the future of the world to make the place a better place for everybody. You know, like it totally. just, totally. and then it was fun too, to be like, oh yeah, we're lords and ladies, which you yes. are whatever it's hey it means a lot to me you can build a tiny you can build a tiny house for ants if you wanted and who yes a little fairy house and just stick it on there i'm just saying maybe maybe the next time we go back maybe that's what you have to do plant plant a house and be like oh yes that is a lady tara's estate exactly exactly tiny house we'll figure it out it's so cute it's so cute it is but yeah it's it's just using the imagination you know yeah how was stonehenge for you when i was there it was very cold but i went in like june it was really chilly and cold. Yeah. We were also there, we were in July, so it wasn't that drastically different. Yeah. Um, it's also because it's on the plain that yeah. you're just getting like sweeping wind. And mm-hmm. also, especially for us, because coming from California, we've been having like a hundred degree days yeah. out here. <laughs> so like we were freezing <laughs> on the trip, which was kind of glorious. Yeah. Um, we need we need more weather in our lives yeah. rather than just hot, sunny, dry all the time. <laughs> um, so yes, it was chilly. I mean, like definitely, even if you look at our pictures online, like we're in like you know, jackets and scarves and like we're yeah. all bundled up. But I kind of like that. Like I'm a yeah. I'm a as much as I enjoy all of the seasons in their own sort of respective ways. Sure. I definitely am like a cup of a mug of tea and a sweater and a book kind of mm-hmm. person. Sure. Um and so yeah, I mean like I loved it. Um Sagan definitely got a little like he was like it's cold. I'm like I know buddy it's cold. We're going to walk now. We'll yeah. be less cold if we walk. You know like <laughs> it's it's tricky too. He's six. So it's like Sure. You know, he only has so much capacity for pushing through things whereas right. like, I think when he's 10 or 12 it's going to be a lot easier. Totally. But I also think like you got to do it now because if you don't do it now, then they never learn that that's what they do. I mean, he's a wonderful traveler. Like he's yeah, extraordinary right. on airplanes and like he's he's great because we've been doing it for so long. Yeah. Um. And I and I think he was like, wow, these are really big rocks. And he was sort of impressed. <laughs> and we talked about like what that means, that what Neolithic sort of means and what it means that there had been people that lived there and then new people sort of came in and lived there. And like we sort of tried to to simplify it in terms that he would kind of understand. Sure. Um, But I don't know that he gets the breadth and scope of like, oh, my God, these people with a lot fewer technologies we're assuming yeah. than yeah, we yeah. have yeah. were able to create these things that like you and I can't go out there and do it right now, you know? And, right. and so, so, I mean, like, I don't know how much all of that see- sinks in or seeps in, but sure. I'm hoping that like through osmosis, he's getting a bit of it, but yeah. I love, but I, I love it. I hadn't been to Stonehenge in that area since I was in high school, Wow! Uh, just because in our trips and our travels, we were usually flying into London, staying in London city proper mm, and then sure. going on to someplace else, whether we were there for a convention or just traveling and visiting friends. It was very rare for Yuri and I to sort of get outside of London in England. Sure. There was just like, what else are we going to do? And so it was really kind of lovely to rent the car and do what we do when we go to Ireland or Scotland. Like, yeah. We were like, oh, yeah, let's just drive around and go to these cute little towns and see all this fun <laughs> we stuff. Know we like, want. <laughs> yeah. And so so that was definitely a delight. Um but I mean, but but I go back to the fact that like we're travelers at heart. And if I yeah. if I pass nothing down to my 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 progeny, except yeah. <laughs> that like the world is a really big place and it's important to to get out of your own experience and your own perspective so that you have mm-hmm. a more enlightened view of humanity and the world and your place in the world, but how powerful you can be, even though you're very small. Like it, yeah. I mean, that's, that's my hope is that like traveling that I may not leave him a huge <laughs> other legacy, but like if we've traveled, but that's you know, like, so, so we are very focused and committed to like spring break and summers and winter break. Like we're trying to, yeah, and not just, not just around the world, but like, as he gets a little older, we do want to do some of the Americana. Sure. Like, go to this you know we'll go to There's Yosemite cool but stuff I don't want to do when he's so little because I'm like he's not going to walk more than a half mile and I don't <laughs> want to do that <laughs> like I want to wait till he goes so like we Smart. also have to be sparing with where we're choosing to go so like sure. we're waiting to do places like Japan even though Yuri's Ooh. fluent in Japanese right um, and he can read and write I want Sagan to be a little older because sometimes when we're traveling he gets cranky and then he doesn't want to do yep. what we're saying and like 
He's a you kid. You can't just not do what we're saying if you're on the platform getting ready to get on the the, sure. the subway. Like yes. it's dangerous at rush hour. Yeah. <laughs> so like oh, yeah. there are places that we will definitely take him when he gets older. Mm-hmm. But we have to be a little more sparing about what are we going to do now that's appropriate. And I say safe, and I don't mean that I don't think the world is a safe place, although there are definitely places that I'm like, I don't know when we're going to Egypt. That's just on the to-do yeah, list yeah, yeah. at some point. I feel you. But um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, but like if he can speak the language, there's a safety sure. in that. Because if totally. for some reason we were to get separated, he could go to someone and say, Help me. You know, like totally. So so there are definitely other trips we would like to take mm-hmm. in the future. But for now, we're sort of like, okay, which are these places that we feel that we can do with him at this point and sort of like sure. keep it all age appropriate. Um, that's smart. I think that's the way to go. Yeah. I traveled a bunch yeah. as a kid as well. And it made me into that traveler of like, Oh, there's, yeah. there's a world out there and I want to see it, you know? Great. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I think yeah. you're on the right track. I hope so. I mean, who knows, man? <laughs> yeah, know. it's, all, it's all a mystery. <laughs> We've never done this before. <laughs> You'll get to this. And you read, you read things rebel. online. You're like, I'm the worst parent ever. You're supposed to be doing this. <laughs> right? I don't know. Uh, it's okay. They we'll don't... start it. We'll start a therapy fund for him now. So there he can you do go. That when he gets older. You'll uh, know in two know. years when he gives you his Stonehenge theories that it seeped in. Yes. That's, that's what it is. You just yes, got to wait for that. Like two more years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's good. I can wait two years. You just go into his room and be like, yeah, Stonehenge was was kind of cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've wanted to talk to you about this. So he <laughs> whips open his closet and there's a mini right, Stonehenge. Right. He's like, a oh, mini Stonehenge in there. Yeah. yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> I would like that very much. Just saying, we'll figure it out. <laughs> right. Right. And so actually, my brain's connecting things with traveling. I picked up Zartana yes. in the last year and a half. Uh-huh. That looked like so much work. It was. It was a lot of work. <laughs> oh dear. It, it like it's beautiful. But there's it's beautiful. There's inserts, there's recipes, mm-hmm. the story mm-hmm. is great. It mm-hmm. just how did that come to be? Where did this idea come from? Talk to me. Well, um, so that I stick on our same discussion point, it came <laughs> out of a trip that Yuri and I were taking, because a lot of oh. times when we're traveling, we are on airplanes or we're on boats or we're on trains or we're on some sort of travel device waiting to get from point a to point b and we're trying to entertain each other or ourselves and of course you know 10 years ago there weren't the same like cell phone in a pocket watch everything all the time things and also when you're traveling you don't necessarily have the internet and and you do bring books but you don't want to be too heavy we we also pride ourselves in traveling really light so like we did we did three weeks in europe with two pilot cases for the three of us like we we travel really really light so um, it used to be backpacks when it was just Yuri and I, but nice. now we need a little more space. So, yeah. um, but so Yuri and I were traveling pre kiddo and um, we were on a train and I don't remember exactly where we were, maybe the Netherlands or Belgium or someplace. We were on a train in the sure. European area. Classic. Classic. And we were telling each other stories because that's something that oh, we cool. like to do. We're, we're both kind of storytellers. And I was like, what if? We had because sometimes what we'll do is we'll, one of us will start a story and then the other one will chime in with things and then we each sort of take a turn of that story. Oh, I love it. And so we were taking turns of this girl that I had come up with, Sartana, who was a traveling Romani girl. And it was funny because every time Yuri would take over the story, he would be like action and adventure. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it would be like my turn and be like, so inside the Varda, which is the little like traveling wagon that she lives in, uh-huh. there's going to be books on the wall. Like I was so obsessed with just des- like describing what it looked like. And it was almost like I went avatar. Um, yeah. Not not Airbender, but like the purple people, blue uh-huh. people, whatever. Yeah, James yeah. Cameron style. Like uh-huh. I was just, I like really got obsessed with this world and who she was and what she did in it. That finally Yuri's like, do you just, do you just want to tell it? Because every time he'd be like, <laughs> and then the, you know, the banditos come. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So uh, like, I just, I, I wouldn't, I wasn't letting him play. And I was like, sure. I'm really sorry. I just really like her. And he's like, okay, great. And so then we started telling a different story, but I had this kernel Ooh. of this character in this this girl and what her experiences were. And I, I just envisioned it as this book where you had found her journal. You, you found the journal that she happened to have that had all of her experiences in it. Yeah. Um, and you don't have any more to go on except this beautiful journal. Mm-hmm. And of course, because it's a hundred years ago, and there's no internet and te- like there's no other way for her to do what she does. She's just right. making notes and journaling as she goes. But I recognize that I wanted it to be wildly 
beautifully aesthetic and I can sketch, but I'm not an artist. And so I was like, I need to hire some artists. And so I started going on, I forget what the website was, but like websites where you look for artists. Sure. Um, Artists.com. There was like a website where people were like, that's where you go find artists. And there was like a whole bunch of people that had their portfolios. Like there was like actually a website where you find like legitimately finding artists to hire. Like I wasn't trying to take anyone's art. I was, I was paying, I paid, I paid everyone that worked. Totally. Um, but I decided that I wanted like some charcoal because I liked the idea that she could draw with just like charcoal that she had from the stove. Oh, that's she cool. could use charcoal in the book and like some pens and, and you know, a little bit of like color, but then uh, or watercolor. But then I also liked the idea that she had things that had been passed down to her, like yeah. tarot cards, like recipe cards mm-hmm. um, and like maps. And yeah. so I found a series, actually found four different artists that did the work for me in the book. Oh, cool. And I never met a single one of them in person. <laughs> I hired them all online and they were located all around the world, so which cool. was really cool because of course I could get on my computer and I could send an email to them and yeah, their time zone might be different, but like we could communicate and I could say yes or no, let's do this or whatever. Yeah. And we, we as a collaborative unit I mean, like it was my idea and I would say, this is what I want a picture of. And sometimes I would sure. Google search, like these are mushrooms, stick those in there. You know, like <laughs> right. I, it wasn't like, I just sort of let them go as a free for all, like do what you want sort of thing. Right. Like, I, I had crafted the story and then I needed these pictures to go along with it. Mm-hmm. But then it was really tricky because I wanted it to be interactive. I wanted you to be able to take the map out and look at it. I wanted you to be able to pull the recipe card out and go, I could make this and yeah. actually make it. And so I had to do so many hours of research to figure <laughs> out how, cause I don't sew and I don't right. cook and I don't make perfume and I don't do any of these things that right. I wanted my character to do. <laughs> so I did all the research and then I would Ooh. have my artists draw out what I had sort of come up with. Um, but I also vetted it. So like I found Smart. people and I was like, you cook. Does this sound like it would work? I looked at four recipes for how to make sort of this thing. Yeah. And I put them all together because I didn't want to steal anyone's recipe. Would this actually work? And they're like, actually, yeah. And then people would try making the things for me. Like it was. Oh, good. It was you had a an process. R&D. <laughs> we, we had a process. Um, and then we made it. But then because it's interactive, which all these pieces come in and out, I yeah. could not find a printer that could oh. print that for me. So I had to go to three different printers to get Dude. everything printed together so that then I could cut all the things out or glue the things in or do all of that. So the cost per book is ridiculous. Because sure. Like I said, I paid everybody. <laughs> right. And so then I was like, well, I can't charge people that much per book because they won't pay for it. And sure. so then I started doing a I guess crowdfunding, crowdsourcing sure. in an in Indiegogo thing to be like, well, maybe if people are so excited about it, I can get some money in advance to sort of help with it. And that'll bring the cost down. And it went great. I mean, like I fully cool. funded what I had asked for. Right. I should have asked for more though, because it, <laughs> each book is still like, it's like triple what it costs you to buy the book. And I'm right. like, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> that was a learning experience. You learn. You learn. You live and learn. You live and learn. But I'm so proud of it. And I love it so much. And you it's delightful. Be. And I and I love, I love that people order it and find it from all over the world. Yeah. And I mean, clearly these are not people that are following me necessarily online. I mean, I, I, I have a very small little fingerprint on social media. A one by one foot, roughly. Uh, yeah, my one by one foot, my lady, my lady yeah. land. Um, but but it's just exciting to be like, how did someone there hear about this book and decide yeah. to order it? And so like, so that's it's cool. I mean, like, you know, we have our own production and we have our own publishing company, and we've definitely made some from some like stumbles as we go, but I'm still really proud of all of the things that we have brought into the world and, and created. As you should be. 15 yeah. years recently, I saw. Ooh, yes. Yes. Actually, I realized that we created Monkey Kingdom Productions in 2004. So that means it's almost been 20 years. Ooh, goodness. Which is gracious. insanity. Look yeah, at this, you. This, this New Year's Eve will actually be yours on my 21st anniversary. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. We weren't, we hadn't been married that long when we started like doing things. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, that's forever. We're old. That's amazing. But, but you yeah. should be proud. It's really cool. I, I, I loved interactive books like that, especially when I was a kid, because it it's that extra level of immersion. Yeah, and you did yeah. good. You did Thank good. You. 
thank you. But it also makes it feel more real, right? Like it, it does, brings it to 100%. life. Like I'm sure you've probably seen them. They have like dragonology and magicology. Oh, yeah, totally. They have these giant books at the at the you know books bookshops when you go in, and they're fun and they're wild and they're cool. But I wanted something that just felt a little more, I really tried just, you know, I really tried to get an actual leather bound cover and I just couldn't, I couldn't make yeah. it work, which is why the cover <laughs> has to be sort of like faux leather print Yeah, um, I like because it. the cost of getting actual leather bound to print it would have made each book like $600. Like it just was not going to happen. And I was oh. like, okay, fine. <laughs> so like there were concessions that had to be made, but I... I wanted it to feel like those other books, even though those books are being printed by huge publishing companies with right. a wide, like, and they've chosen to do it in such a way where it's interactive, but it's, it's sort of more like open pages that are like, it's, totally. it's not the same kind of interactivity. Agreed. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We, we, we have to settle <laughs> for something. We have to make some concessions. That's some right. Concessions to move forward. Cause it's, cause finished is better than not finished. You just yes. want it to be done so that it can be out there so that somebody can experience the joy. But I do, I love that. Like I've had um, parents reach out to me and they've given it to their kids and their kids just cool. like really, really love it. And so like, and they've done, they've done, they've made the perfume together or they've made the meal. Like I just, I'm like, Oh, that's yeah. so cool. I love that. I love oh, that. That's what it's about. You know, nope. spe nope. speaking of a uh, uh, finished, last time we yes. talked, you mentioned that you found an editor for your novel, but now it is done and it's it in is. the world, it's and true. I've I read even, it. It's a real thing. It's, it's like a you real can touch thing. it. It's a real mind. thing. Mine's it's right like over an there. actual real thing. That's okay. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I'm just excited it's, that like it's a real. I know thing. it's in the world. You did it. You it's finished it. It's, how finished does it feel? It. How does it feel? Um, good. Yeah. It feels good. Um, it's been a long it was time such coming. A long, it was such a long process. Yeah. Because obviously I wrote the whole thing before becoming a parent and then I put it in a drawer and didn't think about it for years and do. years because I couldn't. And it yeah. also wasn't, <laughs> it was, I mean, like I had done it. I mean, I did it as part of NaNoWriMo. Right. Just because I was like, well, I'll, I'll try that. You know, Why who not? knows? I'll try something new. Why not? Um, I didn't think I would actually end up with a novel at the end of the month. But this is also before I had a child. So right. I had more time to create <laughs> things and do things. Um, and when I say it was a finished novel, it was probably closer to 60,000 words when I wrote the first, like what I call the okay. vomit draft. So sure. it was shorter. Um, so obviously over the process of then finding my first editor and working with them and then her going off and doing her own thing and me putting it back in the drawer, like sure. things got expanded, <laughs> things got cut, things got moved. Like there was a lot of motion because then when I did finally last, a year and a half ago talked to you about like I found an editor like yeah. then when we started to to like okay we're gonna do this figuring that process out more things got cut more things got added you know like there was sure each each phase of it gave it a new life and a new form and a new shape yeah um and so like it was such a long process that I think there's a little part of me that still has a hard time acknowledging that it's done sure and also and also recognizing what I did because it was so piecemeal sure. because I didn't, I didn't just sit down and then for six months straight build and create a book and then say, ta, here's the book. Right. Like it was like, I did this, but then my brain, you know, like when we get sick, our brain doesn't hold on to how terrible we felt. We're just like, Oh, I don't want to get sick. That was no fun. Like, but we don't right. remember. So like, I don't remember how much work it was. I don't remember if it was sure. different. Like I do, but I don't. Like there's a little bit of- I know just of, what you mean. Yeah, and because yeah. it was so stretched out, like the taffiness of it made it hard to sort of quantify like how much work actually it it took to get to where it is now. Totally. But I do think- um, I do like, I, I do like acknowledgement from the outside world as much as I try not to. <laughs> so, um, but I, I do think that getting reviews from people totally. that don't necessarily know me, but even also the reviews from people who know me, but like outside perspective on it yes. has been helpful because then I'm like, oh, like, I don't know these people. They don't owe me anything. Like, they're not just saying, yes. oh, good job. You yes. did a book. You know, like, there isn't. And I'm not yes. saying people walk around condescending me. That's I, I'm not trying to put that out there. What I'm saying is just that it's hard sometimes to recognize what you've done or, like, totally. what it takes or what it entails as um, as an achievement. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do think that, like, now having it out there and, like, 
having people respond positively to it, having people say like, when's the sequel? I'm like, oh, you yeah. actually want more, you want, you want more of that? Uh, you, you didn't yeah. throw it away? Did no, but I mean like, <laughs> but, but my brain, but, but like me too, like I did it yeah. on a whim. Like it, it was right. just like, oh, well, I, I could probably write some words every day for a yeah. month straight. Like, but I didn't, I didn't set out to write a novel. Like, so right. my, I mean, I did. NaNoWriMo is National Novel Writing Month. So like I did, but I didn't because I didn't, totally. there were no stakes. No one knew I was doing it. It right. wasn't that I was on the hook or culpable for anything. I just created this thing because I was like, well, last year I did, or two years before I did NaPoWriMo, which is National Poetry Writing Month, but I wrote a poem every day. I could write a novel. Yeah. Like, I, but I <laughs> had not? no idea what I was doing. It's kind of like being a parent. You're like, yeah, we could have a kid. And then you're like, oh my God, why did I think I could do? this like it, right. it's it's one of those things where you know it's better to to jump off and build your parachute while you're 100%. falling yes but it also it's also really hard to be able to sort of bask in it sure because like I know this is so silly but like I don't think of myself as a writer like you look at me and you're like well you have five book titles and you've right. written feature <laughs> scripts and you like but I still like if somebody were to to ask me about like what I think about writing, I'm like, oh well, I'm not a writer. Like I do, I don't know. I know just what you mean. I'm not sure how to how to get into that headspace, but because enough people have asked me if I'm writing a sequel, I sat down like two weeks ago and I scripted out because I didn't do this is what I didn't do the last time. I just wrote every day, and now I'm like, oh crap, that was so miserable to try to pull <laughs> those pieces and put them in a different order and figure it out. So this time I actually wrote an outline for a sequel. So now I'm like, okay, I guess I should actually sit down and write it and see if it's crappy and throw it in the drawer and like, you know, right. all that stuff. Um, you know, you know. The you wrote the stuff. first one without an outline? Yes. It is now even more of a miracle that it came mm -hmm. out at all and even more that it came out as good as it was. That's Well, thank nuts. you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. No I'm outline. I'm literally about that. Yeah, all I did was Tara. I forced myself to write every day. And I was like, Ooh. I the one rule I give myself, I didn't have any plan. I didn't have any characters. I had nothing. I didn't have a preconceived idea. Like, obviously, we are humans. We walk around the world and sure. things pop into our head. But I didn't sit down with like, oh, I'm going to write a story about a school for killer. Like, I just sat down. I was like, anathema. Like, I literally just started typing. I didn't know what was going to wow. come out of me. And so... I love that. Some things had to be changed without giving anything away. Not that totally. I think anyone's good at like whatever spoilers, but like if you if you look at like how the story pulls out and there's a journal in the story and relationships and things like that, that was all very muddy when I was writing it because I was just writing and I was like jumping into the journal and then jumping out and I was like, sure. oh, this could be like several hundred years before. Like I didn't I didn't have the timeline. Like I didn't I didn't have anything figured out. Sure. So that was a lot of my rewriting work <laughs> was like, oh God, well, how do I make this all fit together? But I also really love mysteries. Like there's something yeah. about being able to discern and decipher information from the world around you. I think it's why I love adventures because there's yeah. always an element of mystery to it. Yeah. Um, and so, so this time I actually wrote an outline, but, um, but yes, I did not, I did not, I literally just forced myself to write every day for a chunk of time. And then wow. I would not let myself stop at the end of a chapter or a break point. I forced myself oh. to always begin a chapter so that then when I would sit down the next day, I couldn't say writer's block because I couldn't be staring at a blank page where something had concluded. Look at you. So I would always write into whatever the next thing was. So even if I started a journal entry, I would be in the middle of the journal entry or I would be in the middle of what, so that way that was the one saving grace of me doing it the way that I did it was that I didn't let myself stop sure. because I didn't have an outline. And then if, then if I didn't, then I'd be like, well, I guess that's the end of it. Like I don't, cause I didn't know where I was going with it. And of course right. every chapter has to have some resolution. Right. And so that was the one saving thing was that I did that. And then I had, I started cause, cause it starts to get longer and longer. And then I was like, who is that person? What's the name of that character that I, you know? And so then I, I actually made myself like a word document that was next to the word document I was writing in. And I was like, what's her teacher's name? Oh, right, right. That's her teacher's name. And who's that other person? And like, so I, I had to start taking crib notes as I was going because, you know, you, you get far enough into it. And oh, yeah. at least for me, like, and I already suck with names and places. So I was like, <laughs> wait, who are they? What is the, what's the order of her schedule? Where, where is she coming from? <laughs> so, yes. Yes. How, how do you come up with names? Because you got some really cool names in this book. Um, I don't know. I like the way words sound. Yeah. And so I think, um, I think it was just like, it feels like that person. Like there was something yeah. about the quality of the name 
Mm -hmm. Um, It's actually really funny. One of the reviews I got was like, this is such a cutesy book with a cutesy naming of characters. And I was like, you thought they were cute? Really? (laughs) Like you clearly didn't get what I was going for. (laughs) I didn't get that. um, But, uh, (laughs) but yeah, like I tried, yeah, I was like, oh, I didn't think they were very cute. I mean, I guess you didn't like that anathema has like a dark tone is what the word anathema means, but okay. Right. Um, (laughs) But, uh, but yeah, like I just, I don't know. I think I just sort of let it fall out of me as I pictured who the person was. Okay. Um, and then once I pictured them, I was like, Ugh, that's how it makes me feel. Or huh. so, like, <laughs> like I would just sort of like try to find that feeling. And then the word I would sort of, and then occasionally, I mean, like Google search, and this is why I'm probably on an FBI wanted list. Google search was my, <laughs> my friend. Cause I'd be like, how can you poison someone? Well, those are poisons or what's a good name. If someone grew up in Africa, you know, like I, cause I don't always necessarily know. Sure. And then I would look at some names and be like, Oh, I like that. Or I like how that, you know, like the sound and the feel of that and how sure. that sort of works together. That's so yeah, so I don't cool. know. That's, that's sort of what I did. <laughs> although, to... although I will tell you that um, there was a professor in the book who is now named professor from. Yes. And the name when I wrote it was Trump. But then, of course, oh. with everything that happened, I was like, I think I'm just going to I'm just going to just <laughs> right. find all replace. <laughs> we'll just, yeah. We don't need to get into that with anyone. Right. It's fine. We'll just because, of course, this was like eight years ago. Right. <laughs> so like it wasn't Amazing. I don't know. It wasn't as much of a <laughs> thing. I mean, I don't know. There were there were things in this book that uh, gave a visceral reaction, I will say, uh, mm-hmm. putting pins under your skin. Yeah. heating up spikes so it cauterizes wounds i was like oh yeah ah yikes yeah, yeah like yeah. you you also created kill slip day which is the most stressful environment i can possibly think of yes and yes. was smart to have the uh the emotions dampened which have you ever yes. seen equilibrium wait which one is that it's with uh christian bale sean bean it's like in the future there's a lot of action and guns and stuff but they take pills yeah. every day or they get an injection yes. every day and it cuts yeah, their yeah, emotions yeah. off and i was like yes yeah Aha! oh that's that is very much like that. You're right. And I was like, very smart. Very smart. You're Yours right. is way worse. <laughs> no, mine, mine is worse. But it's funny because I think when I started writing it, I had just done it that like the government had affected them and that's just where they were. Right. And then I realized that I needed it to have a little more wiggle room for mm-hmm. the characters. Because also it's really hard to like a character and respond and resonate with a character, find humanity in a character who has no feeling or emotion. Right. So, um, and that's also not something that I see in books a lot where you go on the journey of a character from not feeling into feeling. Yeah. And so I realized that I can't really do that organically unless, yes, they can have had some effects already happen to their body, but there needs to still be a, a an active um, presence that's forcing it so that if that presence gets removed, there is some yes. space to, to grow. Yes. Because um, also when I look at the story, like plot points, if you go Mm -hmm. hero's journey style, like I still want my characters to grow and learn. And I, I needed there to be emotional growth for Anathema, the journey of her story. Mm -hmm. And so um, I couldn't leave it as just governmental right sort of enforced thing because then i was like oh then that means that she, that's just where she is <laughs> like it's already <laughs> done um you know and so yes yes uh so so that's why polyzone is a thing that has already sort of yeah. happened that has dampened and affected society for the worse like many of the things that are happening in the world it's fine. right um, right but that they do still they still are given vitamins at right day, but they're you know it's, it's i definitely love that effects. like there's so many things that you did that and now comparing it to zartana you build your worlds where it feels so lived in and with uh-huh. with one sentence the fact that the headmaster has taste testers was the, a line that i'm like of course he would because yeah. everyone's killing each other that's so yeah. smart and it's yeah. in one sentence, you built an entire ecosystem around it. Oh, it's I love that. Oh, that makes good. me so happy because I will tell you, it's really funny because I had described things the way that I described them just because that's what I think to do. But yeah. then both my editors are like, we don't know what the world looks like. And I was like, how can you not know what the world looks like? Because I've described <laughs> it like in my head. And so then I went back and I tried to stick in a lot of like 
the buildings with their smooth stone, you know, like I tried to like give more vis visual more descriptors. descriptions. Yeah. But then I had people who were like, it was way, you described everything way too much. I was like, I don't, <laughs> I clearly don't know how to do what this. Like, I'm trying, I don't know what to do. Um, but I'm really glad that you resonated with that because that's what stands out to me yeah. about what that, what that experience is like or what that person is like. Yeah. Um, that they do what they do. So like even earlier when you said like nail or pins under the, under the skin. Yep. Um, like I remember there was a kid in school that used to like come in and their, their skin would be all poked and they'd be like, what, what is that? And they're like, oh, I just, I don't want to hurt myself, but I just poke uh, pins into my skin. So I remember I went home that day and I got like a, like a, um, a push pin for like a yeah. sewing kit uh -huh. and I was like, okay. And it totally hurt, but then I was able to do it to the <laughs> edge where it's like more, more like callous and you can layer. sort of like, yeah, you can like poke it in there. And I was like, huh. I mean, I guess if that's their jam and that's what they right. like, like, I guess that sort of makes sense. But then I had this vision of this boy who's doing it because it's hard to live in the world and there are a lot of yeah, stressors and there are totally. people that like, and so then you start to get an idea of like who that person must be based mm -hmm. on the actions they do. Totally. And I think that goes back to traveling. Like you, yes. the more you take in the world, the more you observe human behavior, human choices, human actions, mm -hmm. you can start to understand and resonate on a deeper level and have compassion and empathy, but also awareness. So when you see something like that, you're taking in a deeper story of what mm -hmm. you're receiving it in a different way Yeah. than you would if you're just like, all right, well, I don't know what that, any of that means. Whereas like when you see that, you're like, oh, wow, why would they choose to, what drives them to do this action yes that gets them to this place and then that tells you a whole story because the best mm -hmm. part of storytelling is when the person who's the audience member receiving it fills the story in in their own mind yes it's actually it's actually why cults work so well yeah because they ask you questions <laughs> and then your mind answers it because a, a question in your mind can't go unresolved the brain's job is to answer all questions yep and so if your brain answers the question it fills it in in a much deeper way i.e you don't see the shark in the horror or that you don't see the monster in the horror movie you fill it in in a much scarier way than they could have mm -hmm. done with cg or effects or whatever totally so like our mind answering it or filling in the solution is a much deeper, richer experience. And we, yeah. as the audience, get more invested in that world building and more invested in the story because those little things have now told us a whole story. A picture is worth a thousand words, uh -huh. but sometimes a description is worth a thousand words because then yeah. you've actually made those thousand words in your mind that I never had to write that down. But you were like, oh, I know exactly what kind of person that is. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you see based on that action what's happening. And that's what's exciting. So I'm really I glad that, that, that you like that. It did. That's it's a, that specific bit really stuck with me because it built the entire world back to forward. Because if he's That's doing awesome. that, people are trying to kill him. He does whole things. So he lives in this state of always trying mm -hmm. to think everyone's trying to kill him because they are. Yeah. But yeah. he's in charge. And yeah. no spoilers. I cannot believe the twist. <laughs> with no outline. I I couldn't believe it to begin with. I was I remember when it happened. I was like, what? And then <laughs> I just there was another internal one when you said there was no outline because it's so good. Oh, nah. thank and you. And I love that sort of past informing the future while mm -hmm. like indirectly. Mm -hmm. And it's like like the journal. You're learning mm -hmm. from the journal. It's just ah, you did a good job, Tara. Well done. Thanks. That makes me really happy. I'm really glad you liked it's it. It's really you. good. Thank you. And don't worry. I know I'm on the FBI wanted list and I know I had to research a okay. lot of like how to kill people and stuff, but I'm really not like a scary person. It's not. No, all good. it was research, guys. I'll that protect you. Really don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I also, it took me a little while to figure out how to pronounce anathema. How did you pronounce it? I think I did a, like a Samantha kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Because of the T H A, but that's yeah. just because I'm, I'm dumb. Someone said an anathema, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Oh. Oh. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, was way honestly, <laughs> I will tell you as a kid, like reading Lord of the Rings, none of their oh, yeah. names were what they said in the movie. And so the whole movie, I'm like, who are they talking about? What's going on? Because <laughs> like I couldn't find any of the people's names because I, I didn't pronounce it Boromir. I'm sure right. I pronounce it like Boromir or whatever. And I couldn't right. find who that was. Like, oh my God. I say that because we're reading, <clears throat> we're currently reading Lord of the Rings to Sagan. Oh, great. And I say we, but Yuri is really doing the, the sure. lifting. That counts. Um, because he loves the book so much that he's like, I'll read tonight. And I'm like, you can read it. It's okay. Um, <laughs> but like Yuri just inherently 
says the character names the way that they are said in the films got it whereas i remember as a kid reading it and i had a whole storyline and then i remember watching the movie and i'm like where are all the characters from the book and you're like those characters i'm like yeah you know the elf and he's like legolas i'm like that's how you say it like my brain i just i read things the way that i hear it in my head and that's not how i thought it was pronounced so yes i feel you there's i i refuse to believe that any child pronounced hermione correctly when reading yes. the books there's no yeah. way Hermione or her, her, yeah. yeah 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 there's there's no way there's no, no oh way. there's a road here in los angeles called sepulveda yes. and i remember when i first moved i went up to someone because i couldn't find the turn for sepulveda and i was like i'm sorry i'm looking for sepulveda and i'm hoping you can find and they were like there's <laughs> no road better. called sepulveda <laughs> like they didn't know what i was talking about first of all and they're like there isn't a sepulveda and i like of course had my old map my like what are they called tom the, the thomas guide or something where it's like this giant books with all the uh-huh. map pages in it and i was like it says Sepul- sepulveda and they're like sepulveda and i was like <laughs> Oh, Sepul- Sepulveda. Like, I couldn't find it. I just, I, in, I inadvertently always default to the mispronunciation. So, like, in sessions and voiceover sessions, especially for things that are like dubbed Japanese, I'm always like, what's the name again? What do I have to say? Like, I can, I, my, my default setting is always incorrect. That's what I've learned about all pronunciation is my default setting I feel is you. incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> Your oh, version's wow. way better. Sepulveda. And- yeah, eh, it's a problem, but Sepulveda. It's got some yeah, spice in it. Yeah, it's got character because it. it's yeah. like a serious road. <laughs> yeah, you could say that going into battle. <laughs> right? Sepulveda! <laughs> I, would, I would die under that banner. <laughs> oh, man. So now having finished the novel, mm-hmm. what is something that you learned along the way outside of using an outline this time? Use an outline. That's definitely <laughs> something I learned. That you're like, ooh, this would have this would have saved a little time or you weren't expecting this along the journey. Because it's a specific road writing a novel. Because everyone has a novel in their head, but few people actually do it. And you've done it. Well, I mean, obviously the big one is using an outline. Yeah. Um, don't do don't do the work on the page that you can do before the page. Ooh. Because it it lets you play more when you're on the page. Yeah. So that's that's definitely like the biggest takeaway that I had. And then the other would be that as hard as it is to kill your babies mm-hmm. in the rewriting process, you have to be really committed to what is the best version of the story and what allows the characters to have the most growth and the, the most mm-hmm. of an arc and journey Yeah, so that you are upholding their story. Because once you've gotten them on the page, now they have a story. It's not just your story, sort of. Oh, okay. Um, like at that. least for me, like it started to feel like, oh, now I need to know what anathema would do. Because before I was like, and anathema, blah, blah, blahs. And then <laughs> right. later I was like, oh, anathema needs to blow up. Like it became more, hurt. like it, it yeah. becomes the story of the characters because you start to see them. Sure. And you start to, once they become more fleshed out, you're like, oh, she would never do that thing or right. that isn't true to what's happening. Um, or if you do decide to do something that seems counter or or in opposition, it has to be justifiable. You have to mm-hmm. find a way to find verisimilitude within your world like you can't just do it because it's cool you can't just do it because you want to like there has to be a grounded reason no matter how low or high the bar for the ground is you have to make it real in that world right so it doesn't have to be grounded in our sense of reality although in this case this book is taking place in the future it's not a magical world right and so like i had to do some things because with my characters and my descriptions sometimes i would say things like um she was shooting daggers with her eyes or things like that and then editors sure. would be like wait she can actually shoot daggers with her eyes i'm like no 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 <laughs> like in her mind and then we would really have to like play with how do you write that in a way to show that you don't live in a magical world where like she can kill you by looking at you right. like uh, how do you describe the things that you need to describe them in a truthful way for what your world is, because that's a very mm. different book if suddenly they can kill you by looking at you. Yeah. And I'm sure that's an interesting story and that would be really cool to explore, but that wasn't the story that I was telling. Right. And so I did have to kill a lot of things, even though I thought sure. they were cool or interesting or whatever they, why, where I, what, why ever and however, whoever, those are wherever words. I found them from. <laughs> 
yeah. all the who, what, why, when, where, how's. Uh -huh. However, I got to these ideas. Sometimes they just didn't hold up like as far as like pillars to support sure. the story. And you have to be willing to take that pillar out so that the story doesn't like crumble because there's nothing worse. Like you watch a movie and you're like, they didn't follow the rules. They yeah. set up in the first app that you couldn't do that. And then third, like they did it and it worked. And that doesn't make sense. Like you, <laughs> you have to, you have to treat the audience mm -hmm. with a sense of intellect. You can't just right. like talk down to them and throw stories in their faces. Like you have to treat the audience with respect, but you have to treat the world and the characters you've created and built with the same sense of respect. Just like we create in, in our own realities, we're like, okay, gravity is a thing. When yeah. I drop this, it's gonna <laughs> fall. It's not just gonna like hover here. Yeah. <laughs> like you have to still, you have to you have to hold up all of the the truth that you are working hard to to build. And so I guess write an outline. <laughs> and you know respect respect the story and even when you have to cut stuff like do it in in honor of the better story let the story be as good as it can be i like that and i like the idea that you have when they're in their head they're kind of like your own little mind puppet sort of thing but once they're yeah. on the page they're outside mm -hmm. of yourself and you're in service yeah. to that that's i like that yeah i mean like it i mean like i know i wrote it but like there's something still, fun. like I'll pick it up and it's like I'm reading about anathema like yeah. I get to read about her so That's it's awesome yeah you get a different experience um as the as the reader do you find that being an actor helps your writing because you're you you're character minded do you ever do that we're like oh well this is a human being this is kind of what I do and you're just kind of facilitating it I hadn't thought of that I mean it probably must right, right? you know yeah, I think so. I have a really good friend that went to college with me we got our BFAs in theater together and you know we've been out of college more than 20 years now <laughs> and so she's doing her own thing and she's actually starting to do some writing Amazing. and she's like we've been training for this our whole lives you know it's not like it's right it's a completely wildly divergent path like yeah. we are still we're, we're using all of the character work that we have trained for, like yeah. all the script work that we've trained for, we're just using it in a different way. So it's mm -hmm. not, it's not that difficult because we are trained for it. Cause I even told her, I was like, I don't, I don't really think of myself as a writer. She's like, really? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, because you realize you've literally trained for it. Right. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess, I guess so. I mean, yeah, I didn't do like a writing and right. get a degree in literature or something, but like, it's all about communication right. and about human behavior so yeah. if you stick human behavior and communication together i mean that's storytelling right yeah so it really doesn't matter what medium you're doing it in sure and you know i think if you're worth your salt or something like that yeah in, in, <laughs> in your field in acting you should be able to and not everyone has a predilection to write like it's not totally. like i expect totally. every actor to go be a writer yeah no no, no. there is a you should be able to translate that into an ability to express yeah. however you choose to do that. So so you're probably right. I'm sure that that's that yeah. helped me, but I don't I don't really think of it that way, but you're probably right. I got I got a feeling. I got a feeling. Only I I only think that because when I've written anything, I always think, okay, well, this character what it's always the motivation, right? Like yeah. why are they doing what they're doing and it has yeah. to make sense. Yeah. Now, are you do you do you correct yourself as you're writing or do you wait till it's done and then go back? Okay. Sometimes. Like sometimes here's one thing I'm very proud of. I will always throw something down, even if I know it's the wrong word, but sometimes Ooh. what happens is, so I don't stop to be like, what is the word? What is the word? I'm like, yeah, eh, gray is close enough. And I'll stick it down there. And then like two pages later, I'm like charcoal. That was the word I was looking for. And then I go back <laughs> and I fix it. So like, I do do a lot of that mm -hmm. because I also believe that um, perfect is the enemy of done. Right. And so if you're so focused and so hung up on like getting it perfect, you mm. never complete it. And by never completing it, you actually can't get it closer to being perfect because the sure. only way you can complete it is like, you have to throw the pot before you can like really like make it all together. You you right. never, if you never throw the pot and make a few mistakes and then have to redo it, then you never get a pot at all. Totally. So like you, you have to take action towards completion. Mm -hmm. And so... I often write the wrong word in the sentence, even though I know that's not really what I mean. Sometimes oh, cool. I'll do like, I keep the source open at all times. <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm like, gray is really not the word I want. I don't want gray. I don't want gray. And then I'll like the source it. And if I can find something close, but still not right, I stick it in there and then yeah. hope that clearly there was something in my brain that was like, that's not right. So it has yeah. a different idea, but it's not always easy to be the mouse in the maze to find sure. what that thing was. So I would much rather put the wrong thing in there because I will tell you, even when I was doing rewrites after rewrites, after rewrites, when I was on draft, like seven or eight, 
Yeah. I would still like get hung up on a, on a sentence and I'd be like, that's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Until I would find it. Like, like I still could remember that that was a sentence that didn't quite feel right to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I, the other thing I will try to do, and I don't know if it's my style or if it's just because it's fun for me, (laughs) but like, I like descriptors. I like my adjectives and adverbs to feel like they go with sort of the action of the the story or the plot so like Ooh. i used a lot of terms that like when describing i don't know the the dissection or whatever like like i didn't just say it was i don't know a cut i said it was right. an open mouth you know like like i right. tried to use like Ugh. but i specifically intentionally tried to find ways to describe things that were more related to how i think you describe dead bodies sure or describe gore in a way Mm. that felt like I didn't want to do torture porn. Like that's not what I was going for. I wanted it to be descriptive enough that you were like, that's the world they live in. Like they literally like, this is what they play in. Like, I don't think you Mm. can have a book about kids that go to a school to learn how to be killers without having some killing and death. Like you you kind (laughs) of need it. But I also didn't want it to be sexy in any way like it wasn't it's not glamorous or glorified or anything like that but I wanted the description to be really evocative yeah while while subconsciously like the open the the mouth screaming for help of the like like it yeah it it makes you picture victims or it makes you picture like I tried to use those kinds of words when I was describing things so it yeah. kept you in that reality so like that was the one thing that I tried to do and sometimes I'd be like I need a better word for this because the way to describe <laughs> it was tricky um right. that's usually where I get hung up is honestly how I describe things because I'm like this isn't quite it I know that there's a better way to say this but I get stuck on words and I'm like, I know sure. it's not this one, but it's close to this one. It, it starts with an I, but I can't remember it. Like that's how my brain works. Sure. And so placeholders are always really good. Although I think you tweeted about it I did. and you were like, what do you do? And then that, that other writer was like, I put in whatever that fake word fake is. Word? I was like, oh, Isn't I that love smart? that. But see for me, although that's great. I also find that if I can put in a similar word, right. then when I get to it, I, I still feel what the feeling is. You like and a then touchstone. sometimes, yeah. And then sometimes because you let your brain have a little like downtime, it's like, oh, this was the word. Clearly I was looking for umbra or whatever. I don't know. The right. thing, like, but like, it comes back up. It's like going, you can't think of something. You get in the shower and you're like, oh, that's the thing I want. Like you just, <laughs> right. you need to give your time, your brain time to not stress about it. Yeah. And so at least for me, I have found, because then of course I'm reading through everything again and again. So uh-huh. like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll try his, his silly word insert. I don't know. It was a pretty good one. It was, it was a good one. I... Jordan's another one that does not uh, shy away from gore. His writing is yeah. intense. I love oh. it. It's so oh. good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I did good. like that. He said that. I was like, that's a really good idea. Yeah. I always ask. I, I have an outline typically, but mm-hmm. I get to where I'm, I'm between three and four. And I mm-hmm. know what four is, but I got to get there, but I haven't finished three. And I'm like, ah, oh, do, yeah. do I push through and just keep fighting even though it's a brick wall? Or do I skip and come back? And I yeah. love talking to people who've written you, Yuri, Jordan. I'm like, yeah. how do you guys do this? Because I'm yeah. stuck. I know where no, I have it's to good. go. But, it's good. Yeah. And it's interesting because I think we each have our own like hurdles, right? Yeah, totally. We're not running the same race. And so right. you don't have the same hurdles that I have. I have my own hurdles. Whereas like, this is where I get caught up and you're like, not, that's not a problem for me at all. Like, I think right. <laughs> it's not that you shouldn't ask other people's opinion and, and experience to sort of totally. like bounce it off of, Yeah, but it's also really fascinating that I think each of us, because we are our own individual person, will yeah. have our own struggles and yeah. ups and downs and stuff, which is, it's interesting because it's not like one solve, one, right? one magic solve yeah. that fixes it all. <laughs> I kind of love that. They're like that's what we're here for, you know. It's like, yeah. oh, you're doing the thing, yeah. thing. Yeah, we're all we're doing yeah. the thing. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And you did the thing. It came it out. It's but you, here. so you, you write with outlines normally. Is that right? I do. I so I normally will get like a random idea, or if uh-huh. I have a reason to write something, someone's like, hey, I want to work together. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. Let me start thinking, and then I'll just vomit the idea, the yeah, outline, yeah. just like, uh, and then yeah, I'll mm-hmm. go back and put in the beats. Tweet, and tweet, like, tweet, oh, this person's yeah. here. You get it. Yeah, yeah. So normally an outline. But it starts without one, and then I put one in, and then I go back and fill in. 
see what I'm having a hard time with. Cause I re like, I just did the outline. I've yeah. never used an outline before. So I just did the outline and then I was like, okay, I'll start writing a little bit. I'm having a hard time because like I have my outline and that really should be sort of what the whole length of the book is, but maybe it's cause I didn't do beats, but ah. then I'm like, this is very fast. Like I wrote that whole <laughs> thing and it's not very long. So I'm like, what am I doing wrong? But like, I do know that I need to probably like right. extend the things and yeah. you're always like, yeah, just get it down there and you can, you can fill that in later. And I'm like, I guess, but it feels really short. The thing that I just wrote, I mean, I haven't done the whole thing, but like oh, yeah. I started with like the first couple of beat, like the first couple of like outline points. And I was uh -huh. like, that doesn't feel like it's much of a scene. Like, I know, right? okay. So she, <laughs> she has a dream and then it's like two sentences. I'm like, that's not really enough of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just I have to, I'll have to work on that. Yeah. That's, that's what I do. Or like, if there's a, like blisters, for instance. That oh, yeah. was one I talked to uh, Randall Duck Kim and he's like, you need a monologue because I sent him mm -hmm. my demo reel just for mm -hmm. feedback. And he's like, you need yeah. a monologue. I was like, in TV and film, people don't usually get monologues unless it's like the villain at the end of the movie. Yeah. So then I yeah. started thinking, I was like, OK, all right, well, what do I know? I know about grief. I know about loss. I'm, not, I'm just going to I'm just going to write a monologue. So blisters is five pages and then we ah. just shot it like a short film. That's great. So that came from I needed a monologue. So we made yeah. a short film around that idea. That's awesome. So, so That's really I smart. Just. Figure. Yeah. yeah, you do what do, you got to do, 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 Tara. You yeah. get it. <laughs> Man, I get it. I get it. <laughs> and now you're I officially a novelist. I'm a novelist. Happened. Congratulations, yep. pal. Thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm very, very happy for you. Very proud. Thank you. You did it. You should be I proud. Did it. I did you, it. I know you have a signing coming. I in do. In December. I do. Talk it's at me. a um, place called Dark Delicacies. Amazing. It's in Burbank. Um, they do various author events and other yeah. in-store events. It, it tends to be a store that has a lot of um, darker macabre sort of things yeah. anyway. Um, and this is their like super busy season because of course it's like October, Halloween, right. all that sort of stuff. So they're like jam packed with horror things, of like course. horror feature signings and events and stuff like that. Um, but uh, But this is sort of like up the alley of the people that hopefully would go there and mm -hmm. hopefully I'll have some people show up you know I don't know I hope so <laughs> that's the other thing too it's so weird it's like you put something out on the internet and you're like I crickets I hope maybe somebody will hurt this I don't know I don't know dude this is I like, hear you <laughs> I know it's so hard so hard um but yeah so uh I hope that I'll get to read an excerpt I don't know because they weren't exactly clear because I only have an mm -hmm. hour and a half okay they weren't they weren't totally clear on if I would be reading an excerpt or if they just think that there's going to be people that I need to be signing and I was like I could probably read I don't think there's right. going to be that many people uh, we would be in for an amazing store if that was true yeah but I also they're having me bring books so I'm only bringing 40 copies because I was like well I don't want to travel with like box and boxes like I have no idea who's coming sure so if there was a way to get like an RSVP list but that's not how it works because right. it's just like it's up on the internet so I'm like I don't know um so so yeah, but I'm I'm hoping that I'll get to do like an in-store signing and then do I'm not a signing. I'm doing an in-store signing. I'm hoping <laughs> I'm gonna to do a reading of the excerpt before I do the in-store signing, just because I think it's fun. I think it's cool for people to get to experience the author reading yeah. pieces of their work. Totally. Um and also if somebody is not familiar with it, then hopefully mm -hmm. they'll be like, oh, that's that's what I'm in store for. Right. Because I did get a few reviews who were like, this is not appropriate for children at all. I'm like, um, well, first of all, it's YA, like title? high school. And second of all, did you did you read the title? Like <laughs> these are these are not good people. Mm, right. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's, They're not uh, good people. Again, the door. I was design. thinking I might use that as like the quote on my book. These are not you good should. people. <laughs> like, okay. You should. This book is yeah. not for children. <laughs> these are these are not good people. Oh dear. Yes. I love it. I love it. That's going to be very exciting. Yeah, I'm excited about oh. that. And then you then you can't deny that you're actually a writer. That's you would have done a That's signing. True. You would have done because I did an reading. author signing. You know, <laughs> right? It's official. You're you totally right. It. You're right. Okay, that's true. That's very true. I love it. And just like that, we've been talking over an hour, Tara. I know. Look amazing. You survived. Thank the you for return. having me on the show. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just it's been too long. I'm glad you're well. I'm glad you've had good times. Thank you. So yeah. before I release you back into the wild, I got to ask, where can people find yes. your stuff? Where can they find you online? Your book? Talk to me. I'm easily found online on Twitter. I'm at Tara Platt, as well as on Instagram. I'm also at Tara Platt. Occasionally I dabble in TikTok, but I'm the Tara Platt there, I think. Amazing. Um, so, but I'm easily found. I also have a website, taraplatt.com. Boom. Um, you can see that there's a theme, right? <laughs> there's I a little bit name. of an SEO going um, on here. But if you want to have any more information about the projects that we do, our publishing company, our production company, things like that, 
you can go to monkeymayhemhub.com and that lets you find Monkey Kingdom Productions, which is our production company and Bugbot Press, which is our publishing company. And so it gives you a little more detail that way. Mm -hmm. um, but then the book is available in all formats on Amazon. So you can search Prep School for Serial Killers on Amazon. Very you can cool. have the ebook, the audiobook. The audiobook's read by me, the author. It is. And the print edition. Um, but you can also, if you get it onto Amazon, you can use the author link that has my name and you can find our other books that are available mm -hmm. on there as well, if that's something that floats your boat. So, I but I'm very it. easily found on the interwebs. Beautiful. Love it. And... Yep, yep. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find my demos, short films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the show, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, and Chris. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.